Welcome back to How to Keep Your Dukes Up in the Music Business with Miss Crystal. I am super excited to be partnering with Disto Kid on this video so that I can bring information to my DIY musicians, my independent artists, and talking about not just how do we get our music on the major platforms, Amazon, Apple Music, Spotify, even YouTube, but sometimes even more importantly, social media platforms like your Instagram stories and TikTok. So in this video, I'm going to be comparing music distribution companies and I'm going to be giving you my personal takeaways and experiences having worked and distributed it through each of these companies. Hi guys, I'm Ms. Crystal. I'm an entertainment attorney and public speaker. I'm the owner of Dukes Up Records and most importantly, I'm an independent musician. To start out this video, I just want to make a clear distinction between what we're talking about for independent musicians versus distribution companies that work with big labels. And so some of those distribution companies, they do sometimes work with indie artists, but it's very much they have to kind of seek you out and want to do that deal. And sometimes they even kind of act like a record label in how the contract looks. It's, it's very interesting. But some of those companies might include In Grooves, The Orchard. And in those instances, you are often giving away more rights rights to the music, percentages of royalties, that kind of thing. What I'm talking about today is exclusively the platforms that allow independent musicians to, if you want to distribute music today, go upload your cover art and your song, that you will have that ability. It's very user-friendly and this is absolutely not only what I started with, but what I currently do today. So if you want to have your music on Apple Music or on Spotify, you have to go through a music distributor. Your distributor is basically going to act like this. It's one stop shop. It's going to be the music distributor that will put your music on all the major platforms and usually some of the smaller platforms that you didn't even know about. And so you as the artist have one obligation or as the record label, your only obligation is to sit down, you upload your music, the credentials, the information, you give it to the distributor and then they push it out to all the different platforms for your intended release date. They also oversee the collection of all the different royalties that are coming in from streaming. If it happens to be a site where you can actually download your sales revenue. And then of course, you know, there will be percentages taken from each platform. It differs on every single one and whatever is then sent to your distributor is sent to you. So all you have to do is sit back, collect your checks, or in most cases, your direct deposits. And the other benefit is that most of these companies, if not all, offer a lot of different services as well. So they'll offer things like monetization for your YouTube channel. So they'll be tracking your content ID for you. They can help you register with your PROs, which is your performance rights organizations like ASCAP, BMI. There's a lot of steps that you have to do every time that you have a new song release. And so if you can get some of that help because it's a little overwhelming, if you can get the help from the actual distributor and pay a, a nominal fee, that's a fantastic resource to have. And keep in mind too that when you're uploading your music through these distributors, you are not transferring ownership of any kind. You still retain all ownership for your music and you basically just give a limited license for the company to distribute your music. Now, keep in mind that when you do distribute, typically you do it on an exclusive deal. And so what that means is that it's exclusive, but only to the actual content that you are releasing. So basically, if you're gonna choose one of these platforms to go through, just don't upload the same album on a completely different platform because you're probably gonna get into trouble. But other than that, that's pretty much the only exclusions that you see with these DIY music distribution companies. So let's talk about some of the music distributors that I've personally worked with starting with DistroKid. I actually did my last song release through DistroKid and it was a cover song for The Trick Is To Keep Breathing by the band Garbage. And there were a couple things that I really liked about this experience. Number one, I ended up going to DistroKid because the other platforms that I typically distribute through weren't available. And this is not necessarily the case for each different platform that you go through, but for the ones that I've worked with, they sometimes shut down for the holidays. And so because the release was coming out in December, I needed to find a distribution company that would be able to ingest the upload and have it ready in time. And even in this case, they say, give us, you know, four weeks, uh, sometimes even more. And in this instance, I had about a week and a half before I needed to get this song out. So for all those reasons, I decided just to try through DistroKid. 
And not only were they able to actually make the song available, but there were some other benefits as well. The first being that I really, really liked the interface and the experience actually going through, uploading the music, adding the cover art. It's very simple and it's intuitive. Not to say that it's super overly complicated on other platforms, but I really thought that the DistroKid interface made it so intuitive that I really had it done in probably about 10 minutes or less. And so for me, that was a huge plus. Uploading the music is usually something that I'm doing late at night after all kinds of craziness during the day. And so if the process can be a little more simple, that's definitely something that I appreciate. Other than the user experience, let's talk about money. Like all the other platforms, there's different tiers for how they do their payment structures. And so with DistroKid, the first tier is $19.99 and it's unlimited. So you pay that annually one time and then you have the freedom to upload however many uh, songs, albums, EPs. The next tier is $39.99, same deal, unlimited songs, you pay it annually. And it's think of it kind of like a hosting fee. So while you continue to use the platform, continue to do distribute, you pay that one-time fee. And then of course, other benefits kick in so you can now customize things like the release date, whether it's a label and any other information that maybe you wouldn't be able to put in with that first tier. The nice thing is that of course, on the DistroKid website, you can actually see the full breakdown of all the benefits based on the various tiers that they have. And my personal favorite on this has to do with the actual platforms that are available through this distribution service. And so of course you're getting all the majors, a lot of the minors, but the timing for me is really important. From my experience with all these different distributors, sometimes the music might not be available at the exact same time, the exact same date through every single platform. And I did find that not only was DistroKid able to have that very fast turnaround time to meet my release date, but everything was absolutely available as soon as it did go live. And that's a big deal to me. If my song is available everywhere except let's say Spotify and you know my fans are trying to find me and find the song, that can be a little bit frustrating if it's not actually available on the date that I set. DistroKid also has that relationship set up now where they are distributing to Facebook, which then gets it on your Instagram stories. And most importantly for a lot of us, TikTok. I recently got on TikTok and I'm finally posting and trying to utilize the platform. And not all of my catalog is available, but a lot of it is. And in particular, this song that I distributed through DistroKid was available as soon as the song went live on all the other platforms. And so for me, that was a huge, huge plus. So overall, I had a really positive experience with DistroKid and I would definitely use that platform again. Next, CD Baby. Funny enough, CD Baby was not only the first music distribution company that I went through, but I ended up using them for quite a few years. I think I started when I was around 18 years old, my singles, my remixes, my first couple of albums, and I had a really good experience on that platform. And the way that they structure their fees is a little bit different, even compared to DistroKid. For a single, it's $9.99, and the way they do it is that you upload, you pay that one-time fee, but then CD Baby does take a fee, essentially, from your royalties. And so, you know, remember the distinction here. Instead of paying an annual fee, you're paying it one time, but they are taking 9% of your earnings in perpetuity, meaning for as long as you currently are distributing that song through their platform. And of course, you can kick up to additional tiers. Like for example, they have $29 for an album and it's the same deal, one-time fee, 9% on all of your revenue. And they offer those additional services that I mentioned, such as YouTube monetization, uh, registering with SoundScan and your PROs. And so again, it's a one-stop shop type of platform. And to be totally honest, the only reason that I ever kind of ventured out and started trying other platforms was because at the time, they weren't distributing to Pandora. And for me, that was a big deal. It was very important that I had Miss Crystal Radio on Pandora. And so I started testing out different companies that were able to distribute. And in most recent history, I even circled back with CD Baby and I asked whether they were distributing to TikTok because my entire catalog through them is not currently on TikTok and they don't have that set up yet. But as I understand it, each distributor is slowly working towards setting up their separate relationships. So, you know, if you are interested in CD Baby, I had a fantastic experience with this company. I absolutely would work with them again. And it might even just be something that you just check because I'm sure they'll have that set up at some point soon. 
Up next, Symphonic. I'm gonna jump right into the payment structure because I think Symphonic's structure is very interesting. It's most similar to those other distribution companies that typically do work with larger labels like Orchard, Ingrooves, and they do it where you're not paying fees up front, but they're actually taking just a royalty split. And so their deals will range anywhere from, let's say you're getting 70%, 80%, I've even seen as high as 85%, meaning Symphonic is only taking 15. But it's a really nice way that a, a starting artist, a beginning label, someone kind of in their initial stages who doesn't, maybe doesn't have the money to pay upfront fees or pay annual fees, I really, really like that they have kind of the structure because it makes it cheap. So if you are a record label and you are distributing for five different artists and they have all kinds of remixes, that can add up pretty quickly. So for me, that was something interesting and extra pro tip for you guys. For those of you who do try Symphonic, you can go back and renegotiate your deals. And I strongly suggest that you keep this in mind, especially if your sales increase over time. And so let's say if you do a deal through them, like I said earlier in the video, it's probably gonna be exclusive only to the content that you're actually releasing through them. But make sure you put on your, I guess, lawyerly kind of hat and think about when it comes time to renew, renegotiate that price and get yourself a better deal. So like I said, no upfront fees. And then they also provide licensing for cover songs. Now this is something, I think I forgot to mention it for DistroKid, but I know not only DistroKid does it, but Symphonic as well. If you are doing a cover song, you can get your license or what's called a mechanical license so that you can properly and legally cover that song and release it. But these platforms will actually do the work for you. So you just pay the fee to them, they get the license and you're good to go. And of course, the platforms that they distribute to, the reason I initially went to Symphonic was because of that Pandora issue. At the time, Symphonic was distributing to Pandora and that's how I started those initial steps to actually start Miss Crystal Radio. But they are now also distributing to not just the major platforms, some of the smaller ones, but of course, Facebook, Instagram stories, TikTok. And so they're really staying on the edge of, of you know, technological advancements and these new platforms that we can have our music on to promote ourselves. Quick point of clarification, my producer, that Orca was off camera and he just reminded me of this. At the time, there was the ability to self-distribute to Pandora. And this is a really important distinction I wanna make. Just because your distributor sends your stuff to Pandora doesn't mean Pandora is going to accept you and, and essentially create a station just for you. There is an approval process that you have to go through. So because I was self-distributing, I think that initial approval that I got was from my own efforts. Not entirely clear on that, but I'm pretty sure. And thereafter, once I was already approved as Symphonic was sending my new titles, they were added into the Miss Crystal repertoire. So I wanna be a thousand percent transparent with you guys, so I just want to make sure I provide that clarification. Between the three different platforms, DistroKid, CD Baby, Symphonic, I've had really good experiences with each one of these. And of course, there's small distinctions and nuances between them. So there's a lot more information that of course you can get. Um, most of it's on their websites. And at any point that you decided that maybe a certain platform or a distributor wasn't right for you, just remember there's a UPC, and an ISRC code that's assigned to your release. If ever you decide that the relationship isn't working with a certain distributor, you can take that same information and re-upload and use those same credentials so you don't lose all your plays, all your marketing investment that you put into the original release just because it's temporarily taken down. So that's your pro tip, keep it in mind. I'll also say that's something that I'm always keeping an eye out for as these relationships develop and you work with these companies is which company is able to offer some kind of support in the marketing and specifically in the Spotify playlist pitching realm. You guys know, I talk about it so much on this channel. Spotify is the new radio. It is so important that you are doing well on Spotify and getting added to playlists. And so if your music distributor can offer you some kind of support in that arena, that's huge. 
And also, don't be afraid to ask questions and reach out to your distributor. With all three of these platforms, whenever I have questions or issues, the customer service reps are very responsive. Usually there's not a phone number that you can call, unfortunately, but nonetheless, they're pretty quick and you can get some of these things addressed, but also the question about, hey, can you help me with this release marketing? Or, hey, I just got added to 25 playlist with my new release. I'm an independent musician. What can you guys do to help me? Special thank you again to DistroKid for sponsoring this video and just allowing me to have an opportunity to talk about this because there's a lot of misinformation out there. And the bottom line is that you guys need to make sure that your music is on every single platform, especially TikTok and especially Instagram stories, the places that you can so very easily continue to promote your music every single day. Make sure you guys come say hi on social media because why not? I'm the most active on Instagram, but like I said, I am now on TikTok and it's been such a bizarre experience on that platform. Real quick, not only did I have a couple of videos just go crazy viral and then some do just horribly awful, but it's been an interesting case study for you guys to even watch kind of what I'm doing and how I'm trying to promote my music. So either way, come say hi. It's been really, really cool meeting all of you. We release videos just like this every week to help you with your music career and getting you to the next level. We talk about things like music marketing, copyright, trademarks, and everything in between. Make sure you subscribe and don't forget to turn on that bell notification so you don't miss any new videos from your new favorite redhead. I'm gonna get out of here. Thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you on the next one. I miss Crystal, bye.